I'm not known for my optimistic perspective. Indeed, I've referred to hope as a mistake and a lie at GuyMcPherson.com. However, I hope I'm wrong about everything with respect to abrupt climate change. Sometimes the peer-reviewed literature gets it wrong. Science offers the best available process for understanding the universe and our place in the universe. And yet, sometimes projections and predictions prove to be incorrect. This does not mean the process of science is poor, and it certainly does not, mean, does not mean science is a belief system. Rather, the process of science is self-correcting. When it points to an incorrect outcome, scientists learn from the process and make appropriate adjustments. This is why predictions and projections are so important in science. Unless the United Nations Environment Program is wrong, the ongoing mass extinction event has been underway for at least 10 years. The United Nations Environment Program reported in August 2010 that we are driving an estimated 150 to 200 species to extinction every day. This is at least the eighth mass extinction event on Earth, unless the peer-reviewed literature is wrong about that topic. I will quote only peer-reviewed literature from this point forward in this video. The peer-reviewed literature finally acknowledged the ongoing mass extinction event on June 19, 2015 with a paper by conservation biologist Gerardo Ceballos and colleagues in Science Advances. The paper was titled, Accelerated Modern Human-Induced Species Losses, Entering the Sixth Mass Extinction. Coincident with the release of that paper, lead author Ceballos said during an interview, quote, Life would take many millions of years to recover, and our species itself would likely disappear early on." End quote. This conclusion is supported by subsequent work indicating that the living planet did not recover from prior mass extinction events for millions of years. The latest paper by Ceballos and colleagues was published in the prestigious Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on June 16, 2020. Vertebrates on the Brink as Indicators of Biological Annihilation and the Sixth Mass Extinction is the title of that paper. Maybe conservation biologist Ceballos and all of his colleagues are incorrect. The rate of environmental change is reportedly 10,000 times faster than vertebrates can adapt, according to a paper by Quintero and Weens published in Ecology Letters on June 26, 2013. But maybe they're wrong. Mammals cannot keep up either, as reported in a paper by Davis and colleagues published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on October 30th, 2018. Perhaps Davis and colleagues are incorrect in this prestigious peer-reviewed journal article. Burke and colleagues reported in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on December 26th, 2018, that the best analog for the future is the Pliocene. This paper uses the IPCC's representative concentration pathways in concluding that we are headed for the mid-Pliocene as early as 2030. The representative concentration pathways ignore dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops and the aerosol masking effect, also known as global dimming. The mid-Pliocene was at least two degrees Celsius warmer than today. This stunningly rapid rate of environmental change indicates vertebrate mammals will not survive. Maybe Burke and colleagues were wrong in their assessment, despite the fact that it was published in this prestigious peer-reviewed journal. The ongoing rate of environmental change is proving too rapid for vertebrates and mammals to adapt, and it is underlain by a high level of industrial activity. Yet a reduction in industrial activity also drives up the global average temperature as a result of loss of aerosol masking. Unless, of course, the level of aerosol masking has been overestimated by Levy and colleagues in their January 2013 paper in JGR Atmospheres, and also by Rosenfeld and colleagues, the latter with their February 8, 2019 paper in Science. Earth is already losing habitat for human animals around the planet. A paper by Raymond and colleagues published in Science Advances on May 8, 2020, concludes Earth has surpassed lethal wet bulb temperatures in tropical and subtropical areas around the globe. The paper is titled, The Emergence of Heat and Humidity Too Severe for Human Tolerance. Perhaps Raymond and his colleagues are wrong, not to mention the reviewers of that paper. 
Maslowski and colleagues incorrectly projected an ice-free Arctic in 2016 plus or minus three years in their paper published in the 2012 issue of Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. The rate of environmental change resulting from such an event would likely lead to the loss of all life on Earth. But Maslowski and colleagues were incorrect, as Earth has not experienced an ice-free Arctic Ocean yet. Although, obviously, we are very close to that point. Biologists Strona and Bradshaw found that a 5 to 6 degrees Celsius global average rise in temperature would cause the extinction of all life on Earth. Their paper was published November 13th, 2018 in Scientific Reports and was titled Co-Extinctions Annihilate Planetary Life During Extreme Environmental Change. The paper includes the following information, quote, in a simplified view, the idea of co-extinction reduces to the obvious conclusion that a consumer cannot survive without its resources. The removal of resources could result in the cascading bottom-up extinction of several higher-level consumers. I'm certain Strone and Bradshaw would be happy to be proven wrong. There are additional means by which we could lose all life on Earth. According to a paper published by Mosso and Mahler, published in the May 8, 2020 issue of Frontiers in Plant Science, the uncontrolled meltdown of the world's nuclear power plants is likely to cause the death of all plants. Because plants serve as the base of the food web, species that rely upon plants, which is essentially all other species, will go extinct in the wake of the meltdown of nuclear power plants. The paper is titled Plants in the light of ionizing radiation. What have we learned from Chernobyl, Fukushima, and other hot places? I'm guessing Mosu and Mahler would prefer to be wrong, not to mention the reviewers and editors of that paper. Shao and Pauli wrote, Jet wash-induced vortices and climate change, which refers to commercial air travel and was published in Earth and Space Science's Open Archive on August 3rd, 2020. The abstract includes the following, quote, because this traffic is highly concentrated along the most frequently traveled routes, the vortices aircraft create have transformed into semi-permanent atmospheric circulation, which have widespread effects on how the atmosphere traps and releases heat. It is also possible that these changes alter the loss of water from the atmosphere. This would endanger all life on Earth not just the human population, end quote. Unless, of course, Shao and Pali are wrong, and the editors and peer reviews of this paper are wrong as well. You have likely heard this expression, we learn from our mistakes. The process of science assures that we will continue along an educational path, up to and until we are no longer capable of making relevant observations. Until then, at the edge of extinction, only love remains.